Columns play an important role in a building structure. Their main function is to carry the loads from the superstructure and finally transmit the load to the foundation. In this lecture, I am going to discuss some important concepts related to the design of RCC columns in which I will discuss the definition of a column as per the code, what are long columns and short columns, the detailing of reinforcement for columns, and finally, I will discuss the terms nominal cover, clear cover, and effective cover. This video is brought to you by Civil Field Trainers, an institution that has trained over thousands of engineers during the pandemic and aims to train many more. More on them in the later part of this video. As per IS 456-2000, Column is a compression member, the effective length of which exceeds three times the least lateral dimension. By the term least lateral dimension, we mean the smaller side of the column cross section. For illustration, if we have a column of size 230 into 450 mm, its least lateral dimension would be 230 mm. Similarly, for a column of size 200 into 300 mm, the least lateral dimension would be 200 mm. As per the definition of a column, the minimum effective length of a 230 into 450 mm column should be 3 times 230, that is 690 mm. And for the column of size 200 into 300 mm, the effective length shall be at least 3 times 200, that is 600 mm. However, if the effective length is less than the least lateral dimension, such a member is called a pedestal. Now let's discuss what are long columns and short columns. To define such columns, we must know the concept of cylinderness ratio. Cylinderness ratio is the geometrical parameter defined for a compression member like column to determine whether it's a long column or short column. It is the ratio of effective length of a column to its least lateral dimension. If the cylinderness ratio of a column is greater than 12, such a column is termed as long column. And if this ratio is less than 12, then it would be called a short column. Now, let's discuss the detailing of reinforcement for a column. Columns are provided with two types of reinforcement bars, that is, longitudinal reinforcement and transverse reinforcement. Longitudinal reinforcement is the vertical main bars, and the transverse reinforcement is nothing but the lateral ties, which are also known by the term stirrups when it comes to beams. As per IS 456-2000, the area of cross-section of longitudinal reinforcement shall not be less than 0.8% of the gross cross-sectional area of the column. Also, the maximum area of longitudinal reinforcement should not exceed 6% of the gross cross-sectional area of the column. However, from the practical point of view, the maximum percentage of steel shall be limited to 3% to avoid the congestion of bars while concreting, and especially when there is a need to overlap the bars. For illustration, if we have a column of size 230 into 300 mm provided with 6 number of 12 mm steel bars, the area of steel for this column will be equal to 6 times the area of cross section of each bar, or simply 6 times pi by 4 d square, where d is the diameter of the longitudinal bar. The gross cross sectional area is the total area of this section, hence the area of steel will be equal to 6 times pi by 4 into 12 square, where 12 is the diameter of the longitudinal bar. On substituting these values, area of steel will be equal to 678 mm square. The gross cross-sectional area will be equal to area of cross-section of this column which is 230 into 300 mm. Now let's check if the calculated area of steel satisfies the criteria. Percentage of steel will be equal to area of steel upon gross cross-sectional area into 100. Area of steel is calculated as 678. The gross cross-sectional area is 69,000 mm square. On substituting these values, percentage of steel will be equal to 0.98%, which is greater than 0.8%, hence satisfying the criteria. It should be noted that the minimum diameter of the bars inside a column shall be 12 mm. Also, a minimum of 4 number of bars shall be provided in a rectangular cross section and 6 number of bars to be provided in a circular column. IS 456-2000 also suggests that the spacing of longitudinal bars shall be limited to 300 mm. You should always consult the IS code to strengthen your basics of RCC design. And if you want to master the structural design with practical real-life project exposure, then civil field design consultants and trainers are offering their combo courses at a steep discount for the first 99 students only, in which you will get three complete courses at the price of one. You will learn to design the complete buildings in ETABs, with complete foundation design in safe, 
plus raft and pile cap design. Also, you will learn to create the detailing drawings using RCDC. This certified pre-recorded course covers everything from drawing beam column layout in AutoCAD to creating beam column detailing drawings. The normal price of this course is 3000 rupees, but for the first 99 students, the course is available for just 999 rupees only. Plus, you will get the bonus course on manual detailing and drawing, including slab, beam, column, and footing detailing with e-tabs and excel sheets. The beauty of these courses is their lifetime validity and certification. The courses will be available both in Hindi and English. So hurry up and grab this offer by clicking the link in the description box of this video. Now talking about the lateral ties, IS456-2000 suggests that the diameter of the lateral ties shall not be less than one fourth of the diameter of the largest longitudinal bar and in no case less than 6 mm, whichever is greater. For illustration, if we have a column provided with 8 number of longitudinal bars, out of which 4 number of 16 mm bars are provided at the corners and 4 number of 12 mm bars at the intermediate positions. The diameter of the largest longitudinal bar would be 16 mm. Diameter of ties would be either equal to 1 by 4th of 16 or 6 mm, whichever is greater. 1 by 4th of 16 is 4 mm, which is less than 6 mm. Therefore, we can provide 6 mm ties in such column. However, it's practically recommended to provide a minimum of 8 mm ties. Now, let's discuss what should be the maximum and minimum spacing of lateral ties. The spacing of the lateral ties shall not be more than the least value from the following three criteria. The first one is least lateral dimension of the member. The second one, 16 times the diameter of the smallest longitudinal bar. And the third criteria, 300 mm. For illustration, if we have a column of size 230 into 450 mm with four number of 16 mm bars and two number of 12 mm bars, its least lateral dimension would be equal to 230 mm. 16 times D will be equal to 16 into 12, which will be equal to 192 mm. And the third criteria is 300 mm. If we compare all the three criteria, 192 mm is the least among all. Hence, we can provide a spacing of 192 mm. Now, let's discuss what is nominal cover, effective cover, and clear cover. The steel in RCC members is provided with sufficient concrete cover to protect it from the surrounding atmosphere. To understand all the three terms, let's consider the cross-section of a column. The clear cover is the distance between the exposed concrete surface to the surface of the nearest reinforcing bar. It should be noted that the concrete surface does not include the finishing layer like plaster or any other finishes. However, as per IS456-2000, the term clear cover is replaced by the term nominal cover. For columns provided with a minimum diameter of 12 mm bars, the minimum nominal cover provided is 40 mm. The term effective cover is usually used in design calculations. Effective cover means the distance between the exposed concrete surface to the centroid of the main reinforcement. To understand this, let's consider the cross section of a member. Let D be the diameter of the main bar and small d be the diameter of the stirrup. Centroid of main bar is equal to d by 2. Hence, effective cover will be equal to nominal cover plus diameter of stirrup plus centroid of main bar, which is d by 2. So, this was all about this lecture. If you like my content, please subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to remain updated. Also, don't forget to check out the structural mastery course by civil field trainers. The link is provided in description.